next uh, uh, session as well. So let's just quickly try the fa last few. Um, I think I have three, four names. So if you can squeeze it somehow in five minutes, it would be really great. Um, the next one I have here is Tal Herskuis. Sorry? Let's hope it's starting. Successful. I don't Sorry, in this one. <coughs> Is this one yours? Uh, maybe. Yeah. No. It's like two giga. This is terabyte. I don't. Know. Okay. So it's okay if I let Leon do his thing while yeah. we're trying to get this up. So Leon, if you can uh, take your turn while we try to get this one on.
for the story. Yeah, so, um, so some of you. Um, yes, yeah, so some of you saw the um, like our presentation yesterday about the uh, real extent stuff. So uh, yeah, this is an ugly thing I have here, but an example anyway. Um, it's just a little bit about the uh, authoring of uh, of real extent stuff. Um, like we're making this uh, generic uh, entity component system um, for which you have an entity component editor. And it's currently a dangerous tool that you can easily use to crush everything. But uh, we are making it something uh, that is for the for artists. And, and the idea is that with entity components, you can put any kind of data you want in the scene. Uh, and then you can have your own code that uses that data to do anything. And, uh, and it's all synchronized uh, to all participants in the distributed simulation. So, um, so, for, so here I have an object in the world, uh, this one. And here are the components that this object has. It's touchable. Uh, I can say, like, set the highlight. Uh, now it has the highlight on hover on. But if I don't want it to highlight, now I disable it. And now it doesn't highlight. Um, here's the placeable which is the uh, the ogre uh, c node and um here's the mesh um it has, a, has a skeleton reference and uh, all kinds of stuff but this is a custom thing that i added myself using this editor it's called uh, anime sync for animation synchronization and uh, it has one like kind of attribute that i just added myself which is called uh, time position and it works so that if i um uh, yeah, of course, I get a demo effect now, but but when I change the uh, the time position and, and actually am connected to the server, then uh, you'll see the post change, and it's like a puppeteering uh, thing, but uh, I managed now to mess something up. But anyhow, other stuff is that um, I like to host your uh, um, a scene. Uh, I can make this big. Uh, so this is um, like an early uh, development version um, connected to a, to a remote server. Um, so uh, this server is like in Finland somewhere. And there's a guy uh, listening to this stream uh, who is hosting it. And, and the thing is that to, to load something to the scene, uh, I can just um, drag and drop. Um, this kind of like prefab. Um, oh, I was talking about a different window, so it didn't even show. Um, does this work now? But anyhow, um, yeah, I was talking about this window. Um, let's make it full screen. Yeah, so this is the scene that's somewhere in Finland, and and, um, and to manipulate the scene. Um, this is like an uh, outliner kind of thing from where I can, uh, for example, uh, like add new entities and, and save the scene and import them, but also just uh, like delete the whole thing. <laughs> now I deleted the, uh, the server in fin the scene in Finland. And, and, but to bring in new stuff in there, I can just drag and drop these XML files to, uh, to that window. And the idea is that, that we really want to make it this like the web. So it's uh, like data driven, so that with H with uh, with the web um, you have um, uh, HTML docu documents that describe the uh, the web page that you log on to. So similarly, similarly we have uh, this like scene documents that describe the scene that you have, and um, but it's not only the static scene, but it is also the user interface and the game logic and everything, uh, the whole application. You can just track and, track and drop the, uh, the application from, um, from your local hard drive. Um, so for example, here's a chat application. Um, and the, uh, I think it's opening a, yeah, but I also can, Copy paste it, so I can drag and drop the uh, chat application to uh, 
to that world or a different world, yeah. So, and um, yeah, why doesn't it manage to open the, uh, the source of the, uh, yeah. So this is uh, a chat application uh, made using a real extent. So it's just um, a scene, scene file, and you don't need and you don't need to do this by hand. But you just uh, use this editor to uh, to put script references and stuff. So so this is um, sort of where we have been heading, and it's the first version is going to be released uh, next week of this uh, new way of doing everything uh, data driven. But uh, but the current the earlier stuff where you just which we demoed um, yesterday is uh, is uh, was released yesterday. Yeah. So, thanks. Thanks. Uh, while we set up for uh, for you, Leon has one quick announcement. Yeah, sorry, just a quick one because we're running a little low on time. Um, I was going to show anybody interested in Axis, which is a render man compliant renderer, which some of you may or may not be familiar with, just to show you where we are with things at the moment. Um, if you're interested in rendering and animation, come find me. I'm here, well, tonight at the meal and uh, tomorrow as well. So come find me. I'm here. <laughs> Thanks. And then, please, this is the last uh, last, last person before we continue with the, the official uh, or the, uh, with the uh, uh, awards. Yeah, so please. Without the sound, but it's okay. Uh, this is part of a collaborative team project in CG Talk. Uh, I did the uh, animation and rigging in Blender. The rest of it was done in different softwares. Uh, the modeling was made in Mudbox, the rendering in Lightwave, the tracking in PFTrack. Uh, I used uh, Blender 2.49 because I had to use the MTD Vertex export to work with the other people, to send it for rendering. <coughs> and uh, yeah, the project, I don't work on it anymore. I'm working on a different project, but it's uh, open. So if people want, I can send them the rig. It's really a basic rig. It's my first rig with Blender. But uh, yeah, if people are interested, in, interested to make more animation with this, <coughs> then uh, talk to me. Or there is uh, softdistortion.com. <coughs> Uh, there is also a video blog of this project, and my website is dancingshapes.com, so you can see it in my website and write me an email or whatever. That's it. Thank you. So I'm sorry we don't have time for more for more open stage. We have to continue, and uh, that's with the the Reagan competition. Um, I don't see. So Marcel, please. So uh, Marcel is here going to present the uh, awards for the Raygun competition from Green Button. Thanks, Nathan. I've uh, delegated the technical role to, to Nathan. I thought, thought it was too risky. Um, it was great to be able to uh, join the conference even briefly to, uh, to experience the smarts and the, and the creativity in the room. It's uh, something to be admired. So we'll just bring this uh, brief presentation up. I won't take too much of your time. That's me, Marcel. I, it's a triple Dutch uh, name, but I'm actually a Kiwi from, uh, from New Zealand. Born in New Zealand, the land of uh, Middle Earth, shall we say. I'm the chairman of Intergrid, so uh, we'll move that along. Uh, Intergrid is a company that invented the green button. Now, how many of out, out there have heard of the green button? How many have used the green button? Yeah, not bad. Uh, keep at it. Um, it's, a, it's an innovation that was really came about from uh, Scott Houston, who was the CTO of Weta Digital. And uh, you might be aware of the uh, amount of horsepower required at Weta to uh, render that movie. That over 3,000 3, cores. I think it was the third largest... Uh, uh, computer uh, capability or capacity in the world after NASA and, and, and one other at the time. I think it's about six, six largest now. So it's, uh, it's quite impressive. But Scott really wanted to release the, uh, 
that power to the masses. So he, he really wanted to make it uh, available to, to consumers. Uh, the green button's more than a render farm. Uh, there's been references earlier on to rendering capacity, shared and open, and, and, and various other versions of, of rendering. But the green button is a, is, a, is a smart piece of software that uh, is applied to a raft of uh, different applications, uh, digital media, biotech, oil and gas, applications that are uh, resource intensive. And the vision for, uh, for the green button is that that, uh, that smart bit of software, that plugin, will become the, the de facto standard that enables those applications that are resource intensive, computationally intensive, to access large scale computing capacity. Um, so there are a large number of different uh, applications that the green button is likely to appear in. Uh, we have uh, uh, also an aspiration to change the paradigm. Um, a lot of you guys might have a technical background. Um, I did once, but uh, we want to move the conversation away from talking about cores and processing and what have you. That's all just uh, um, uh, inputs. Uh, we're moving the uh, green button into a real service where you pay for a level of service. Uh, and if it's a low level of service, then it's potentially free. But then, of course, there's no commitment to uh, how quickly you'll turn around the, the outcome. But of course, at the other end of the spectrum, if people need a, a professional outcome in a short amount of time, then we can commit to a service level. And we're working on the release of that uh, at the moment. Uh, we've moved to Windows Azure, so uh, uh, the green button's now enabled for Azure. Why? Because of the uh, mega capacity that's available. Um, uh, green button was uh, spawned in New Zealand. Um, we needed a, a global solution. So we work with Microsoft to, uh, to release the green button on Azure, and, and we're working on a number of applications today um, uh, that will access Azure. Uh, we've got obviously in Blender and LuxRender, I've introduced some innovations around tiling and what have you. Um, so there's a number of users out there that are using the service uh, with both Blender and Lux, uh, and Lux Render. Um, commercial, uh, the commercial topic is always a sore point, open source, so, you know, who pays, who doesn't. Uh, we want to solve that, uh, that dilemma by uh, offering a, uh, a service level ultimately that uh, ranges from a high level of, um, of uh, service commitment right through to uh, open-ended. Uh, that'll be released when the uh, job prediction algorithm is completed. Right now we're offering a sort of a gym fee type structure uh, where you can be part of a shared pool for $19 a month and uh, you share 100 uh, cores with uh, potentially 100 people but I don't know if any of you go to the gym, um, you'll probably find that sometimes it's full and sometimes it's empty uh, and you've got access to a large amount of resources for the same rate. So we reckon that's a bloody good price I know it's not free, <laughs> but it's uh, a damn good price because uh, you'll get a, you know, two hundred dollars worth of uh, value for uh, for twenty bucks a month. Um, so uh, uh, encourage you to have a look at it, and you can upgrade it then to uh, higher levels of performance. Enough of the selling. Um, you, you want to break out for, for for dinner and drinks, and of course you've got the uh, the Suzanne Awards coming up. Uh, how many of you uh, took part in the ray gun competition, the Dr. Grodwarp? Not too many. So obviously the winner's not going to be in this room, right? <laughs> um, it was a great prize uh, trip to uh, New Zealand to meet the Weta workshop guys. Um, there was a presentation earlier on. There was a fellow that worked, at, worked with Weta. It's obviously easy to be familiar to, uh, to folks in the room. Um, we had uh, entrants from around the world uh, and uh, really amazed at the quality of the, of the submissions. Uh, so we launched that... Uh, that competition in partnership with, uh, with Weta, with the support of Greg Broadmoor, who invented Dr. Grod Grodwart, and he's the chief, uh, chief judge. There's an impressive image of Greg right there. Uh, so let's have a quick look at uh, the various category winners. Um, it's a bit like the Oscars, I suppose, and we're going to run through them very quickly. And uh, here you have them, the rocket designs coming up. These are all using uh, Blender. So they've come from the Blender community. We had, um, I think we've got 2,500 users in about 77 country, of which 100, about 1,000 registered on the, uh, for the uh, competition and about 240 entries. So we'll, 
as we uh, go through this, we'll click across to, uh, to Greg. It's coming up, uh, Nathan. Hopefully it keeps working. Yeah? <laughs> so far, so good. Here we are. This is, uh, this is uh, Greg. We got the sound? I hope so. There was music with that other stuff, so... Hi everyone, I'm Greg Broadmore from Weta Workshop, a uh, concept designer and the creator of the world of Dr. Broadbots. And you've just seen an astonishing collection Jeez. of uh, entries uh, from the, the Raygun shootout competition. And they really started to ramp up in quality. It started strong and it just got stronger and stronger. And there's an amazingly diverse selection of, of beautiful modelling, clever and inventive design, and just really creative stuff. It was really quite inspiring. And it got really hard for me to choose. I can really tell, I can tell you that um, uh, I would make a selection one day, check the next day, and then there's a whole bunch of new entries that were always just uh, eye-popping. And, uh, and I, it was nice to see a transition of skill in the Blender software as well. Early, the early days, uh, you can see that people are finding their way into it and seeing what it's capable of. Uh, and at the end, the final winner that we see is just an astounding piece of work, like really taking advantage of every capability of that software I, that I could see, and um, really quite inspiring. The ultimate winner was the Vulcan 2 Carbonizing Carbine 2 from Noeo, and uh, that is really a spectacular model. Hyper detailed, uh, so inventive, just uh, I had to freeze frame through each piece, uh, through each section of it to try and see how much detail was actually made, and it was, uh, yeah, my hat is off to you, man. It's an exemplary piece of work. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the winners down in New Zealand, showing you guys around Weta, and um, hopefully giving you guys a great time. Not that sort of great time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, uh, the, uh, the winner that he referred to there is a guy called um, Chris Rose, uh, Mark Rose, I should say. He's uh, based in the States somewhere, so we'll have to track him down. Um, he's part of the uh, Blender community, so some of you might well uh, run into him or, or know him. Uh, we'd like to stay part of the uh, community, and uh, we seek your feedback and your support. Uh, and uh, certainly like to thank uh, Ton for his support you know, with respect to the, uh, the competition. We had a number of other partners in there. Um, and uh, you know, really, we, uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to be part of uh, something that we thought was pretty special. So uh, thanks a lot, and uh, good luck with the rest of the conference, and uh, good luck with the, uh, the award ceremony that you've got lined up coming up right now. OK. <laughs> thanks, Nathan. Thank you, Jason. So, Tom, it's your turn. It's my turn already. Is it already uh, 7.45? It's 7.48. 48! Oh my god! <coughs> Let's see if Basham is uh, ready or Andy. Yeah, okay. One moment. This is ready. the technology. I have to give a speech or something first. Uh, uh. Well, already getting bored. Uh.
This was a rehearsal. <laughs> we try to do this on original Hollywood level, right? And this kind of stuff, they don't broadcast it, and they put a commercial in between. So right now, you see Coca-Cola coming by, and Heineken, and Blender. I can go on now? No. Wait. <laughs> okay, no, that's what you. So welcome to the 2010 Blender Festival and Susanna Awards. Um, I'm very happy that we had so much, so many good submissions this year. I think everybody has seen it today and yesterday night. Um, we have three categories for which we will give a Susanna statue. And I would like to invite the first uh, uh, three people to come forward to help us giving the first award. Uh, Shunke and Pablo. And Dov. So I think the guys deserve to be named and mentioned, so here. Yeah. Go on. So the nominees are... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you want to do the first one? First one's Hjalti Helmarsson for Midstrati Company Real. I, no, this is more fun. I can read what they're reading. Live broadcasted on the internet, man. Yeah, but there's the camera. Yes, where's that the camera? No, there's the camera. Yeah. There's the camera. Yeah. I don't see it. Um, the next one's Kaik Ostak for the Zotac trailer. We've got Stefan Meyer for Bluff. We have Samuli Jopanen for Materia and Juan Carlos Montes for John El Esquizo Frencho. You do it. Juan Carlos Montes por John El Esquizofrénico. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm good at this. <laughs> I would like to ask Pablo to uh, open the envelope for who's going to get the award. Susanna Award. The Susanna Award for... Wait, 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 wait. Ooh. The Susanna Award for Best Design Short Film 2010. Awesomeness. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> is for Juan Carlos Montes por Lionel Esquizofrénico. Um, I think uh, Juan Carlos is not here. No. No, so we will be watching this on the internet, maybe from here. So maybe you present him the award. A Juan Carlos, uh, congratulations. And a big round of applause for Pablo, Dolph and Schunke, who designed the beautiful uh, the Sinto film. You were responsible for the visuals. And Ben, of course, but he's in Australia. So the second award is uh, for animation. I would like to get the animators from the Durian team uh, to come forward. Lee, Bjorn, Jeremy.
if one of you, you will mention the name. <laughs> Best character animation award. Can you mention the name and the title of the film? First up, we have Andy Martin for He Bring the Third. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and next we have uh, Savio Pedro uh, with Untitled, two characters mimicking uh, playing a video game. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll do some yeah. Next we have Ivan Pret for Untitled, Guy in Swimming Suit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back. Oh, it's okay. We'll go yeah, me yeah, and then yeah, you yeah, do yeah, the next one. <laughs> And next we have uh, Jared De Beer, and he did the another Untitled with the Athletics on the High Bar. If you notice, all animators are Australian. <laughs> okay, lastly, we got uh, Leon Beutel, Beutel, for Curse. Yeah. And I would like to give Jeremy the honor to open the envelope for the Susanna Award for Best Character Animation. And the Susanna Award for Best Character Animation goes to... Uh, how long can we keep this up? <laughs> long, long get on with it. <laughs> Ooh. Goes to... Jared the Beer. Hey, Jared! <laughs> Maybe you can present it to him. Congratulations, the award for you. <laughs> okay, and thanks to the Durian team animators. <laughs> well, the, the, the best film award, of course, should be handed out by Colin, our director, but he's not available, and I have a very good replacement for him, which is David Rivois, also one of the... Where's David? David Rivois? David, David, David. David is drinking somewhere. Oh, there. Where? Huh? Where's David? Okay. Uh, he's on the toilet, maybe. Maybe you have to all shout really loud, David. Okay, so now I have to tell funny stories or something. Hmm? He's not? On the toilet. No, okay. <laughs> David is not on the toilet. That's a very good observation. So maybe David is in the cafe, maybe? Well, you will find out. What about the producer? Why don't you do it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So. Then we will announce the Susanna Award for Best Short Film. Okay, for nominations for the Best Short Film 2010, we have Andre Barad, A Very Little Warrior. Uh, Pavel Likskovsky, Lista. The students of Pepe School Land with the Cup. Chris Burton, Taste Lab. And Juan Carlos Camadella, Juan Del Monte? No? It's not Camadella, Camadella. Camadella, Juan Del Monte, the Fox Fable. Ooh. Okay. And the award for the best short film 2010 goes to Pavel Likskovsky for Lista. It's awesome. Thank you for here. Hey, Pavel. For you, we will send it. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is the end. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, we're now going for dinner. I think most of you guys. It's very close. Uh, I will go first to make sure everything is fine. I'll give you guys three drink tickets at the entrance. 
Uh, we will have a great buffet cooked by the uh, Durian team and the Peach team Thai restaurant. It was really behind us. There was a great Thai place. I have no idea how they will make dinner for 150 people. So we are going to find out soon. So thank you and see you later. Also, just quickly, just a quick thank you to uh, Andy, Bassam, yeah. Pablo for making the, uh, the title sequences.